And so I'll take notes and rely on others to chat. Perfect. I uh, just start the recording. So we are ready to start. Hi, everybody. Um, today is to the agenda. Um, we are first announcement to say that because we are doing a Jenkins core release in the coming days, um, please do not modify anything related to release.ci. Um, so hold on any PR that could affect that service. Um, the second thing that I noticed today is archives of Jenkins.io is really unreliable at the moment. I still have to find some time to investigate what's wrong. Um, what I discovered today is it affected the monitoring check that the check if we can download packages. Um, Kara uh, made a PR about that. So the idea is to use get.jenkins.io instead of archives.jenkins.io to monitor if we can download packages, which obviously makes sense, um, which is the service used by everybody. Um, on another, so the next topic, um, we made some, Garrett and Damien made some nice improvement regarding Olivia. the way. Sorry, Before yes. you go on, um, just on archives.jenkins.io, Mark, did you end up reverting your change that made the pipeline not fail if archives was down, or did you leave it commented out or disabled? Uh, it's a good point. I have archives.jenkins.io, the change I made has been reverted, but it worked last week for the 2.274 release. So yeah. I'm not sure how to answer that, Tim. That's a good question. There's probably, seems... There's probably a risk there that it could cause the pipeline to fail. Yes, yeah, risk that the 2.275 and 2.263.2 release pipeline won't be able to upload to CI to archives. However, now Olivier, because that's a stage, those are staged releases. Daniel's announced that they are security releases. Since they're staged, I assume they are not yet uploaded to archives.jenkins.io yeah, because they're staged. Mean, yeah, which means that we must be sure that archives.jenkins.io is ready when we publish the packages because it may fail the publishing script. That's a really good point. Or we disable, or we re add marks disable or, or true to it because it doesn't really matter if they're there, right? Oh, yes. It that's a really good point. So that's, um, Olivier, do you want to have that conversation with Daniel Beck to, to see which is best for him? I think it would be best for now here. to disable. Sorry? Oh, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. I missed that you're here. Thank you. I didn't want to interrupt the talking, but now that you're mentioning me. So do you have a preference there? Is, is since the release, those releases are being staged, uh, they aren't immediately dependent on archives.jenkins.io. Should we disable the attempt to publish to archives because it's currently not trustworthy online? Well, I'm, I may have missed the beginning of this topic. Um, so what is archives used for exactly? So, so, so what we need is once we publish it, it needs to be made available to everyone. Yes, archives, archive the Jenkins audio is used as a fallback. So in the script, when we do the sync.sh, one of the stage is to upload the packages to archive the Jenkins audio. So it's not directly used, but it may affect um, the sync.sh scripts. And basically what's happening with that service is for some reason, from time to time, it's um, really slow. And so we get timeout issues. So people don't, don't do not download artifacts from theirs, but um, as part of the release process, we upload our artifacts on that machine. So it's probably better to just remove um, to, to 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 disable that that service for now. So is don't that uh, what's what's currently behind the fallback host name? So the fallback host name is um, get the Jenkins.io. In fact, so when when we do when you do the release, we upload the artifacts um, to an Azure file storage, and so fallback the Jenkins.io is the same. Um, yeah. so, so nothing's just, using just, archives right now. It's just a fallback. Fallback. Okay, so uh, we do not even need archives Jenkins.io before all the mirrors are synced. 
because that is occasionally a problem. I think that was, uh, Tim, what we worked on with plugins uh, mid last year. Um, when the mirror distribution was delayed, uh, we made sure that it's immediately available from somewhere. Um, and this is not implemented with the archives, correct? Yeah. So uh, for the plugin, uh, maybe for the plugin, yeah. So but for it's using the it's using your file storage as fallback right now. So so when you look when you look at the the script sync.sh, you see that we upload packages into multiple locations. We upload them to Azure File Storage and we upload them to Archive. Um, the thing is, in the past, Archive has had a limit on the network bandwidth, which was really slow. And the purpose of Archive was really like as a fallback service. So Archive contain every artifact that we published since the beginning of the Jenkins project, while most of the mirrors um, only contain um, packages for the last year, something like that. Um, okay, so it's not important for the distribution. No. So if it can be safely done, my preferred approach would be to remove that from whatever scripts would do the uploads to ensure that they finish with everything else that is actually needed. It's, yeah, it's safer in the current situation. Who can handle that, Mark? Mark so I think, it. yeah, so I think what that means is that's just reinforcing that we should reapply the change that I had done a week or two ago to temporarily disable upload. Tim had mentioned it earlier, and I think that's that's just it. We need to apply again the um, the skip archives uh, change from two weeks ago when it was offline as well then. Great, okay. Uh, is that, do you want me to submit the pull request and then Daniel, you and Olivier review it? Yeah, if, or, you, if, if, you, can, if you can submit the pull request, that would be nice. Um, yeah. All right, we'll do that later today. Uh, it's gonna be several hours yet. Is that okay that it's delayed several hours while I'm in other meetings? Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, my only question is, I'm not sure to understand which fix is needed. I thought that you had to manually modify the scripts. On package no, no, no. I, I pushed, I pushed a change into the repository. It wasn't a, it wasn't a manual change. It was, okay. it's really tracked as a PR. Okay. And, but you do, you pull it on the machine though, right? Okay. 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 I see, I see, I see which repository you mean. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any last um, comments on this topic? No. Um, the next topic, which is the way we build Docker images. So as I was saying, Garrett and uh, Damien made some progress here. So the way it's working now is the reason, so the reason why they started working on that is because we start moving more and more jobs on the Jenkins running on Kubernetes because it's faster to, 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 to provision um, jobs. Um, nodes um, on Kubernetes, but the challenge is because we do not run the Docker because we don't have access to to the Docker demand. Um, yeah, we had to modify slightly the, the shared library used here. So I can. Um, so I won't. I can show you what it looks like. So basically, what it says, right? What it, what we are doing right now is, if you want to provide, if you want to add a new um, Docker image on the Jenkins CI infra organization, you just create a Git repository with the name Docker dash and the name whatever the name you want to use. Inside, you create a Jenkins file with the right um, right function, and then it will automatically. Um, the, it will automatically create a pipeline job on infra.ci and uh, it will run some linting tests of we using adolins so we can we can look at the results of those adolin tests and then it builds uh, a docker image using both um, the branches and the tags um, which means that oh yeah um, is that we don't just, is that just doing Jenkins infra at the moment or can it do Jenkins as well so let me let me show you. Um, 
Um, Mark, can I share my screen? Can I share the screen? It's just doing Jenkins in for the language. Yeah. I think it has access to Jenkins, so you might be able to. Because I've got a couple that ideally we moved over to possibly that. So ideally, one of the things that I see here is we could move many of um, Docker image build from trusted.ci to infra.ci. So in order to increase the visibility of um, those jobs and um, it's just easier to, to manage right now. Yeah. So if I show you what it looks like here. Um, wait, wait, wait. Um, new browser. I oh, know it's already here, so I can just show you. Where is that? It's here, sorry. Do you see my screen? Yeah. So we now have a new folder, which is Docker Beats. And if you look at it, we right now have a bunch of um, Docker images. So as long as you create a Git, as I said, a Git repository with, um, with a name that match Docker dash datadog, it will automatically be added here. And so if you look at one, we can either build image based on branch or on tag. And so if we build on the branch, it will push the latest and the, the master branch. And if we, we use the tags, um, we can also trigger uh, for a specific tag. And so let's say for, for instance, this one. So the idea was to use um, release drafter um, to, to generate new version of the current images in this, in this case. So the version would not match the different version that you have inside um, the Docker image. And so we, so we, yes, we do some LinkedIn test build. But what is interesting here is we also have the view of Adolint warning. And so you can see what are the errors um, found in this Docker image. And if you look, if you click on the difference, so we see that um, this error is located into on two lines. Um, if I look at the Docker file line seven, it suggests that we run apt-get install with no no install recommends. Um, so we only install the packages that we need. Um, and so yeah, that was a nice, a nice improvement. And then it automatically push the images on Docker Hub. Um, so that's the current situation. Um, the manual procedure right now, when we need to add a new Docker uh, image, is to create the Docker Hub repository in advance. Um, and is that actually it. needed? I thought as an owner of the org, it automatically um, created a repo when you pushed. On Docker Hub? I thought so. Oh, that would be interesting. I think it, at least under my personal account, I think it does that. I'm, I'm pretty sure so I can just- Yeah, yes. so that, 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 that would be a nice improvement. Um, it it, yeah, it creates can... automatically for you. Uh, even though it's a public one with the default configuration set. So depending on what we expect, we are not totally sure. So by default, if you expect it to be public with the default set, it's okay. Otherwise you must create it before, as soon so, as the token is able to yeah. push. Okay, so, so it's, it's odd. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Then you, anyway, we don't have private images and we don't push, we don't have credentials inside Docker images. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, now the question is more about all those Docker files that we are building, where we have the Docker file next to an application. Um, and the, the example that that pop up in my mind is the account app, where we have the Java code and the Docker file. Um, so we may have to manually add the job here. What I've been thinking is instead of adding jobs here based on the Git repository name, maybe having a way to, let's say, add based on a Git repository label or whatever. If you, if we have a specific Jenkins. There's a really article. nice, yeah. There's a really nice pull request open on the GitHub branch source for doing it by topic really efficiently okay. too. So maybe, maybe, maybe that, that will help, yeah. So we could have, I mean, it's just a way to visualize all the builds, but in this case, we can clearly see, I mean, that would be nice to have every Docker builds from here. Okay. So that was um, a quick Just, just to add something, 
there is an upcoming process that will come uh, within the shared library that if um, an incoming re uh, an upcoming pull request that will allow to run some tests between the build and the deploy part when building a Docker image. This test will be only uh, using a driver named tar. So it will only check for the presence. You can only check for presence of files for file contents inside the content of the Docker image. It won't use a Docker engine for the security uh, risk that it will cause inside Kubernetes, but it will allow to document and work on TDD when you have a Docker file image, because you say, I expect to have this file with these properties with eventually this content inside my image. So then it, you will have a kind of no, no regression testing for Docker images there. If we want to go further, um, we must use a set of agents that will be able to spawn the image on VM. Because if you try to run Docker in Docker, even though you have the rootless available, you still need some CAPSIS admin rights on the host, underlying host. So the best solution for today will still to, might be if you want to run some Docker workload to run a virtual machine dedicated only for that. That will imply stashing and unstashing the TAR image before pushing it to a registry. The goal here is to avoid pushing an image on any Docker registry without having run some tests. Ideally, I would like to add then security scanning on the static image. But already having some tests, so you have the lint that helps you to parse the Docker file and find good and bad patterns. Then you build it with IMG, so no Docker engine involved. And then we use a Google container test for testing that will only deep dive inside the image. And if the test pass, that will be run on each pull request. And if you are on the main branch, then it will deploy automatically. Security scanning shouldn't be too hard to add, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, doesn't need any, doesn't need the VM for that. But yeah, sounds really good. Yeah, that's another, that's another improvement that would be nice. Um, any last suggestion, question? No. So the next, the next topic is about mirrors. Um, we start to need more mirrors um, right now. Um, we had issues with Severion over the past weeks, uh, which has been unreliable. And so now I would like to maybe write a blog post to promote and ask um, contributors to provide mirrors. So basically what I did is I improved the ham charts that we have right now to also install a nursing server in, on the mirrors. The reason why we need nursing is because mirror beats users seem to, to gather metadata information for the files and to know if the mirror is there or not. So, um, so we just need to be able to, to reach from from your orbits, the Ersing server. So everything is in place. Um, I just have one issue that I still have to, to identify why um, it's the, the mirror is marked as down, even, even if it's there. Um, but yeah, that's that's the, the what's the missing part um, before uh, before um, promoting that that component. So Olivier, I've I've considered using some Oracle infrastructure as a possible mirror, just as an experiment, uh, would you be willing or interested if I were to offer a, it, it won't be what I would call in an interesting locale, because if I remember it, they don't have a data center in India or in Australia, but it could be Phoenix, Arizona in the US. Um, is that interesting or is it better that we look outside for, for this initial experience? Is it already so mature enough that you don't need me to test drive it? So, so basically, right now we have a ham chart. So, if you have a Kubernetes cluster, that's definitely super simple to install because the way the ham chart is configured is working is it starts multiple container. One container that that provides you the, the content from a specific directory, just an Apache uh, daemon. There is a second container which is a nursing that uh, provides you the content from the same direct from I mean from the directory also. Um, um, uh, as a nursing. And then you have a third container, which is a cron job that regularly pull information from, from get the Jenkins.io. So from, from one, one mirrors, one, one trusted mirrors, basically. And so the first time you deploy the charts, you need to wait 
the time that it takes to download the packages to have a local copy of one of the mirrors, and then we can use it. Um, if you don't, if you don't have a Kubernetes cluster, if you want to maintain, I mean, if you just have a virtual machine, um, you can reuse either the containers on your machine. But I mean, at least you will have to do some manual um, operation. Um, so I don't have a ready to deploy uh, thing for mirrors. Well, but but that's great because I would want to do it in Kubernetes. So I missed in the notes the container with rsync, a container that pulls from get get .jenkins.io on a schedule. What was the first container? So you have rsync, Apache, and Apache. Um, and in uh, cron uh, cron job. Cron okay, got it. So. And so the idea is really, I mean, it's really to, to have it to work independently. Um, and so the rsync daemon is a read-only server. So it's really just, I mean, it just provides information. Um, and right in the current configuration, it only allows connection from specific location. So the, the rsync is really designed to be used from get.jenkins.io. Oh, oh, okay. Which means Thanks. that if you don't know, if you deploy it on your cluster, you won't be able to to test it uh, from from your machine. Um, we have, I mean, yeah. And so we have dedicated Docker images built on the Jenkins project on Infra.ci and published on Docker Hub. So everything is public there. And did we did we have anything on the server on mirror being unreliable? Do we need to notify them of that, or have we just given up that we can't trust it? And the, I mean, I think I have I have to send them an email uh, to report the issue. My I think the problem is they just have too much traffic. Um, they they are not only providing data for the Jenkins, they also offer a mirror for Debian and other projects. So my guess is we just we just ask them too much. So I think it would be easier today we just provide more mirrors in there um, in the same area than then. Yeah, they just sent an email once complaining that we turned them off and I think forgot to turn them back on at some point. So they did notice yeah. at some point. The, the the problem is, and that's the same that's the same issue that we have on our infrastructure. You always have moment in the day where um, you have a lot of traffic. Um, typically, the moment between Europe and the United States um, during the morning. I mean, morning from for the United States, you always have small peaks at that time, and it's exactly the same that happened on the update center. And so, if you only have one mirror, and in the case in that case, I think you, we only have two or three mirrors in the United States. Um, the, problem, the problem is, and it's hard to detect, uh, the problem is the, the, serve, the, the mirror is there, it's working. And then for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, the mirror is down. And so nobody is able to, to, let's say, install plugins, for instance. And so we just have to be sure that we have enough. Yeah, so so the the mirror their mirror is actually in the Netherlands, and one of the problems is it is incorrectly identified as being on the east coast of the United States, and and that that causes all sorts of other issues. So for me, leaving it offline for now is fine. It's healthier for our east coast users. They're not getting, they're not being, they're not ask, not asking for data from the Netherlands that could be available from New York. Um, any last question regarding mirror infrastructure? So the next topic, uh, we are running over time, so I, I'm trying to, to go quick. Um, so we have few PRs that we affect infra.ci and release.ci. So I would like to plan a maintenance window next week with Garrett and Damien. So we upgrade, uh, we merge those PR manually and we upgrade everything. So we are sure that um, we are running the hand bit, bit v3 ham chart for Jenkins and uh, a few other PRs. So basically what it means is we need to send um, uh, um, an announcement on status.jenkins.io to announce that the service may be down. Um, and also we have to announce on the mailing list. So that's one of the things that I have to work with Garrett regarding that. Um, the two next topics, um, we have one about acceptance tests. So I would, I would like to, to, to use the Jenkins acceptance test to, to test um, Jenkins Docker images. I found two Git repository, but I'm not sure um, 
which one I should use, but I propose to, 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 to talk about that um, during the next Jenkins Info meeting. Um, it's not urgent for today since we are already running over time. Uh, I propose to move it to the next meeting. And the last topic, which is highlight for the New Year post, um, Oleg, Oleg, yeah, but Oleg is not there. I don't know if Mark, you have some inputs um, on that topic. Ah, just, okay, just share information saying that you wrote a document, I guess. So, sorry, here it comes. So there is, there is a New Year's blog post due to the Continuous Delivery Foundation the 13th, so tomorrow. Uh, and this is the draft of that post. Uh, if we have specific things in infrastructure that we would like to highlight in that 2020 summary, we should propose them to it today. All right. Uh -huh. the, I've, I've put some things on infrastructure in here already. Yeah, like automated, like releasing Jenkins core? Exactly, like releasing Jen Jenkins release automation, like uh, all sorts of other things that are infra related are in here already. But okay. if you please feel free to review it. And if you think we missed something, this is a this is the, the day to propose a change to it because it's due tomorrow. Okay, uh, I'll try to look at it. So any last uh, thing you want to discuss? Otherwise, I guess we can finish the, the, the talk here. So I'm going to three, one, two, three. Then thanks for your time, everybody. Um, see you in RC and um, see you in one week. Bye-bye.